Oh, slim profile rails, M-lock, QD attachments. What is this? Like, aren't you guys trying to hurt yourselves? Don't you want some weight, some durability, something with Picatinny all the way around? Let's talk top five quad rails. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to bring you another top five of mine because, well, I like sparking some sort of debate and making people mad in the comment section. So what today's segment is all about our rail systems. Well, mainly because in honor of our current giveaway, the Dandy Defense Mark 18, which features and has attached to it one of the most popular, one of the most sought after, uh, proven, reliable rails ever. The Riz 2 rail. And uh, we'll talk more about this guy later, obviously. But I just want to go ahead and throw this out there. Typically, whenever we're referring to quad rail, and that's what today's video is about, the top five quad rails out there, typically what we're referring to is a rail that on all four sides features the Picatinny interface. All right? Sure, it's old. It's been around for quite some time. But man, it's hard to beat. So let's go ahead and hop right into this. And uh, by the way, spoiler alert, the Riz 2 is not my number one. Anyway, but my number five, reaching on over this side, I know it makes no sense, but it's the only thing I had to actually show you guys right now. Midwest Industries, the Midwest Industries Combat Rail T-Series. This is the CRT rail by Midwest Industries made here in the United States. And I have Midwest Industries on actually a couple of different rifles of mine that I've used because they've always been just affordable. They've always used quality parts and they've always worked really well for me. So Midwest Industries has been around for quite some time making all sorts of different accessories for all sorts of different firearms. AKs included, even though it's technically a, you know, the Zastava. Uh, but anyway, you get what I'm saying. So what I like about it is for one, 6061 material, it's strong, it works great. And uh, if I'm gonna be putting a rail on one of my guns that's aftermarket or whatever it might be, and I want it to actually be quality, I'm gonna pay attention to the material that they're using, the heat treating and all that type of fun stuff, because yeah, I might be a little rough on my guns, but I'm not so rough as to where I'm actually worrying about it like flexing, bending. I'm not absolutely torture testing every gun of mine every single day. Every gun, every day, but you know, whatever. So I try to go with something that is quality in materials and also has some features that I like. For instance, one of those features and something that Midwest Industries features on a lot of their rails are the integrated QD that you see on this guy. They try to put them just about anywhere they can, at least two, so one on each side, on a lot of their different rails. And what I do like about Midwest Industries also is they pretty much make a rail for everything and in different variations. If you want Picatinny or M-Lock or I don't even know if they're still making key mod, if they are, well, good for those of you that are still running key mod, I guess. But uh, Anyway, so I do like them that they're available and they typically have a pretty good price on them as well. So Midwest Industries is my number five. And let's roll on to my number four pick. Next up for my number four pick is the Centurion C4 rail. This guy right here is actually kind of unique in nature because it still uses utilizes like a two piece installation, but still free floated. You're gonna notice too that on my list, they're pretty much all free floated accuracy man but anyway so yes it is a two-piece system that actually can clamp on just about any standard barrel nut which is very cool if you ask me because you don't have to have all sorts of these different types of uh, proprietary parts or stuff that you can't seem to find and that always adds to the cost granted the Centurion C4 rail isn't cheap by any means, but it is quality and you don't have to remove any type of muzzle devices. You can keep your front sight post on if you still want that and so on and so forth. Clamps on, tightens on, boom, all of a sudden you got a Picatinny rail at the 12 o'clock giving you one continuous for the upper receiver. And then of course, all the way around, seeing how we're talking nothing about anything else other than quad rails. So I do like this system quite a bit. Also too, you'll notice that this guy has heavy ventilation. There are just holes punched through all over this thing. And that of course allows for heat mitigation. So if you are running this rail, you might notice that if you are running, uh, let's say longer rates of fire, faster rates of fire with your AR or whatever it might be, uh, it might get a little hot on you. But that's fine because once it starts to cool down, it might cool a little bit quicker because, well, heat dispersion. Makes sense. So very neat design patented by Centurion. So check out the Centurion C4 rail. Again, a little pricey, but it is definitely quality. 
With that being said, let's move on to my next pick. Next up, BCM. BCM and their QR, QRF, the quad rail free float that they have to offer, it just screams simplicity and durability. This thing right here, especially for the price point, it's really going to be difficult to find any other rail that's gonna beat this guy and be as affordable as it is for as quality as it is. Still 6061 T6 treated, so awesome. And on top of that, of course, made here in the USA. BCM has been known for a long time. Those kind of guys that don't really need to like advertise themselves because, well, BCM just makes great products. Granted, their name's all over the place and that's because people recognize the quality. Can't argue that. So BCM for my number two position, or excuse me, my number three position, makes sense here. And with that being said too, um, I think I can get away with saying this. Our next giveaways feature some BCM products, but uh, yeah, you'll just have to stay tuned for that. But anyway, again, number three, the BCM QRF, and also too, just to keep everything fair, when, I'm, when I've been kind of looking at the prices of all these two, and we don't always talk about price here because the internet's forever. Inflation obviously isn't. Well, I should say the current price of things. You never know what's gonna go up and go down. But anyway, so we don't like to advertise too much price here because like I said, it could possibly change the moment the video goes out and be different from what I'm recording. So to make sure everything was the same across the board, I did try to find all the rails to be about the same length, 12.6, within that range there, about 12 inches or so. So that way, whenever I am comparing these, I am getting an honest price point difference. So again, for the price, for the quality, for the name and everything else that you're getting, BCM has it covered. And of course, they can use uh, their system with the low profile gas block, uh, the front side block if you have it, and just about everything else. It's just I would recommend taking it somewhere to get installed in case you do have to slip that over the front sight block because removing that thing can be a pain. Anyway, I'll leave it off there. Now let's go ahead and talk about my number two pick. Riz 2 for number two, the Daniel Defense Riz 2 rail. <sighs> Put it this way, my Mark 18 that you guys know and sometimes hate, it gets a lot of use, a lot of abuse, a lot of use and everything else. What I have here is the M4A1 by Daniel, and yes, of course, it features their RIS-2 rail. They recently announced the R3, which is pretty much the same, but M-lock on the sides and on the bottom, which again, very cool, but not what we're talking about today, but you're still getting that very sturdy lockup. And that's one of the coolest things about this gun. The lockup feature on this guy is super noticeable. And it's one of those trademark things where it's just like, okay, yeah, that's obviously a RIS-2 rail. I can see how it integrates to the upper receiver, super tight. And one of the coolest things about the RIS-2 is, well, being able to attach a grenade launcher to it and still be free floated. That's awesome. The only problem is though, probably never gonna attach a grenade launcher to any of my RIS-2 guns. That sucks. So as cool as it is, is it a feature that's really worth it for me? I don't know. And the price point on these guys too, well, they're not exactly cheap by any means, but again, at the end of the day, you're getting what you pay for. And if you are looking to maintain zero, have your gun get run over and still keep on working, uh, well, check it out. I, th I think Larry Vickers actually did that at Take Aim quite a few years ago. But uh, anyway, the RIS-2 is great. Uh, one of the rail, as far as an honorable mention goes, is one that Danny Defense makes that is one that I actually like a whole lot. Granted, it's uh, not as bulky as the RIS-2, but it's the DDM4 rail, which you see featured here on the Mark 12. This guy is super cool. Instead of having the six locking nuts on this, you have just four, but you also have integrated QD back in the rear and up front. Unfortunately, on the RIS-2, there isn't that QD, but it's also a contracted rail. And for whatever reason, Marines and everybody else that actually use these guns, uh, well, let me put it this way. The Marines, we appreciate QD, okay? We, we like it. The Marine Corps, on the other hand, they're like, no, there's like, you know, points of failure there or something. Whatever, dude, I got guys walking around with paracord slings and you're worried about QD. Anyway, so the, the M4 rail, I like it because of how thin it is. It's definitely lightweight, especially on the Mark 12 here. This is just a lightweight gun, which doesn't make sense seeing how it's kind of more of a DMR SPR role. Uh, we've given one of, the, one of these away with uh, Alex Zedra, and it just, we shot it quite a bit and had a really good time shooting it. But I can get my hand wrapped all the way around this rail. Uh, I've got a couple of rail covers back here, and it just, it's just comfortable. And that's really all there is to it. Also too, you'll notice, <clears throat> My magazine here, it's a mag by a Tam Fam Graham on Instagram. 
He's got the little uh, topography design on these. Go check him out. He's in uh, Washington State, which is very unfortunate for uh, a lot of you guys right now because they just changed what they considered to be a uh, high capacity or standard capacity magazine. Make sure you get, make sure you all of you are staying up to date on your state laws because, uh, well, your Second Amendment is under attack every single day. So make sure you're supporting organizations like Gun Owners of America, Firearms Policy Coalition, who are actually trying to preserve your Second Amendment rights. And uh, my mind is uh, standard capacity is whatever you want it to be. All right, with that being said, Frank, if you're watching, I know you're probably heartbroken that the Riz 2 is not my number one choice when it comes to rails. But as soon as Daniel Defense makes an entire monolithic upper receiver with a quad rail integrated, we'll check it out. Before I roll into my number one pick, I'll just go ahead and throw the honorable mention out there. Sure, it's gonna be Knight's Armament. Knight's Armament actually started the entire rail interface system or rail integration system, the RAS, RIS, uh, way back in the day with their delta ring clip-on and all that type of stuff. And it was cool and it worked out pretty well. Of course, they have moved on to the URX, but good luck trying to find any of this stuff. They don't really care about the commercial market anyway. It's pretty much what they told us. So, uh, yay them. Now let's go on to actually a company that cares. Number one, Lewis Machine and Tool with their MRP Quad L. Okay, so let me explain the name real quick. Lewis Machine and Tool, Tool LMT, quality stuff. They have a massive reputation, great following. Uh, the MRP is their modular rail platform, and the L stands for, kind of like the lightweight, it is ultimately for the 556 series. Okay, AR-15 series, because you can change out calibers and stuff like that. Now here's what makes this thing Super cool. The entire rail, the upper receiver, all one piece, making it monolithic, making it probably as accurate as you can get. There is no question about whether or not your rail is slightly off or not, which sometimes you can see if you're just tightening down to a barrel nut, if you don't have it correctly aligned, and you are running optics or something a little bit further out on the gun, night vision, IR, whatever it might be, you have the potential for losing zero. It just That's just the fact of the matter. This guy, is if we were having this entire debate about, I don't know, being durable, sturdy, ruggedness, you can't get much more rugged than one solid piece of metal. And I don't know how to combat that any other way possible. If you haven't seen any of our SHOT Show coverage of LMT, you might want to go check it out because they do offer some great things. And they also offer this in an MLOC configuration and also more of an AR-10 configuration. Granted, this is the only rail system that is monolithic and also an upper receiver. So if we had to give technicalities, uh, I guess I'll say, then sure, the Dana Defense Riz 2 wins. So. That's how I'm able to, you know, make you happy there, Frank. But anyway, the LMT though, that stuff right there, I think, I think honestly, it's just superior as far as what it does. Again, the, it being monolithic is really, really makes that. Now, here's the one thing that was difficult to find and may not even have been found, and that's actually the materials used. I'm not afraid whatsoever to say that Lewis Machine and Tool uses at least 6061 aluminum forging, probably the best of the best if I had to guess. But through rumors and stuff like that, uh, Bush, Bushmaster used to actually use, uh, well, they used to actually source from Lewis Machine for their uppers. And according to rumors on the internet that you can find, they actually utilize 7075. So if that's the case, then yeah, it obviously wins. But LMT is kind of, uh, I guess you could say secretive when it comes to some of the materials that they use, which I guess I can get. But anyway, with that being said, maybe if I asked really nice, they would just tell me. It's just, I had all that time at SHOT Show and I didn't think about it, a lot was going on, okay? But anyway, so for my number one pick, the LMT MRP Quad L. Uh, for what everything that we're doing here. They offer it in different lengths as well. So pretty much whatever you want. Also, if you're kind of questioning, well, wait, the barrel. How am I supposed to install the barrel? So that's another thing. <laughs> it is their own barrel, but it's an old, your own QD system. If you wanted to actually switch out calibers, you can. And on camera, while at range day at SHOT Show, uh, well, LMT showed us exactly how to do that. So it's just a super quick system that you can use to change out calibers to, well, I mean, do pretty much whatever the heck you want to. So they do still offer modularity while being as strong as possible. So 
Again, very impressive style from LMT, and hopefully you guys will be seeing some of their products back here on the wall sometime soon. But anyway, uh, I'll keep it kind of, uh, I guess I'll end it there. Really, there's not many other rails out there that uh, I can talk about, and I'm sure there's a few that you guys can. So head on down to the comment section below. Let us know exactly who are your top five favorite rail manufacturers. Doesn't have to necessarily be quad rails and all, but I want to hear from you guys. Who do you like? Of course, there are a lot of them out there that make some pretty unique rails, super lightweight stuff. Today was obviously all about those little quad rail boys for obvious reasons. But anyway, let me know down in the comment section. I'll leave it off there. Don't forget to, to head on over to classicfirearms.com to get your entries for a quad rail of your own, your own Riz 2 for the Mark 18 pistol that we're currently giving away. One of you guys DM'd me, uh, Magdump underscore Morgan on Instagram asking, why do I have a vertical grip on my Mark 18, but an angled foregrip on this Mark 18? Quite simply, this one is manufactured and recognized as a pistol. Hence why this is a pistol brace and not a stock. And the Mark 18 that is mine personally is an SBR. Follow-up question is, would I prefer the Mark 18 pistol or the SBR? At the end of the day, this is just a lot easier to obtain, more affordable at the end because you don't have to pay for the tax stamp and you can do more stuff with it without breaking the law per se, like, I don't know, going across state lines. So. Personally, I would start off with the pistol. If you like that, if you're comfortable with how it feels and everything else, cool. If you want to SBR it, change it to an actual NFA item, you can do that later on. So uh, hopefully I answered some of your questions. If you guys have any more, feel free to ask away. Of course, the comment section is there to help all of you guys in this 2A community of ours uh, are typically pretty helpful. So don't be toxic, be nice, be friendly, and start inviting more people into this community. And again, supporting organizations like Owners of America. So I'll leave it off there. Don't forget classicfarms.com to get your entries in on the Mark 18 pistol with the PEC 15, with the dual pressure pad by Surefire, with the Surefire Scout Light, Magpul angled foregrip, EOTech holographic, G33 magnifier, also by EOTech, SBM4 brace, adjustable, which is nice. So, you know, could fit your forearm for if you got real long forearms or whatever but anyway okay i'm done i'll leave it off there guys as always we appreciate you in your business utilize the code word mark 18 god bless and we'll see you soon